In this episode, we prepare for our upcoming 10 to 12 day passage to Canada. We'll be provisioning, planning our route using Predict Wind, performing a check of the rig, and filling up on fuel. So it's 10.30 in the morning on Calico Skies, and we are hot. Today we're moving Calico Skies closer to the main town, so we're in a better position to provision, fuel up, and prepare for our upcoming passage. We've gotten some signs that it's really time to be heading north. We're starting to heed those signs today. Unexpected. Oh, a rain squall here. When's the last time you anchored in the rain? It's been a while. This is like throwback to New York times. Yeah, like where we have weather. Except way warmer. As summer approaches here in the Bahamas, thunderstorms become a more frequent occurrence, and regular squalls like this are here to stay now. I wonder what the temperature is outside now. So with everything closed up in the cabin, um, the temperature down here has actually gone up two degrees and it's now 88. That's why we have to go north. We can't handle light rain anymore without the cabin being 90 degrees from closing two hatches and one window because of this rain. Water is also 85. Yeah, he just said the water's also 85 degrees, so that definitely doesn't help. But I think the rain's lifting now, so we'll be able to open everything up. And hopefully the that little squall just kind of took out some of the humidity. looking for a spot in uh, the anchorage now and I'm just thinking as I'm standing here looking for a spot that once the anchor drops everything goes into high gear from this point on for passage prep so preparing for a 10 to 12 day offshore passage requires at least several days time We'll need to provision, get fuel, prepare meals, and stow the deck. But the first thing we need to tackle is to make sure we understand Canada's immigration requirements. I'm on a, a, a private sailboat down in the Bahamas, um, which is American registered. And we are planning on sailing right from the Bahamas to Canada. I was wondering, do we need a clearance paper from the Bahaman, Bahamian authorities for that trip? They usually don't give an exit paper to American boats. Um, I was wondering what you guys required. So like my pat my passport and ship's papers are usually good enough? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. I appreciate that. Have a good day, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Friendly Canada. <laughs> Just getting ready to go up the mast to do a rig check. Um, we probably did the last one in Grenada, so we sailed about another 1,200 miles. Um, it's about time. So, just taking some tools with me up there. Um, we have, we're having an issue with our antenna. I'm going to check the mast head connection, so I have these to try to open it up. I always what take are a, these? Uh, like a, just a couple pliers to help me. It's seized. I tried to open it by hand last time. It didn't work. Okay. Some tape to tape over the connection that I'm opening the check. Other men you never know. Wire cutters. Wire brush in case there's some corrosion on the mast head antenna. And what else are you bringing up with you? Uh, the phone. It's Grace One. We don't have a drone yet, so Grace wants some drone footage. Exactly. It's the only. It's the closest I can get to a drone is when Phil goes up the mast for uh, me. My rig checks, yeah.
Out of all the things we have to do to prepare for our passage, saying goodbye to our friends Chris and Michelle is the worst. We can't avoid it any longer though, so we're headed to Andromeda for the last time. What's happening up there, guys? Wagyu. Wagyu. And what? Whitney Houston. Grand finale. For now. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> All I see is the light behind your head. What are you doing? Hey, bud. We've woken up early today to provision in the cooler morning hours. We're planning to depart for Canada in about three days, so the 72 hour countdown has officially begun. So we've just woken up. We are doing the 48 hour um, weather review. We use a weather forecast and routing program called Predict Wind, which provides route options using wind, wave height, and current data points. And it seamlessly integrates with our satellite communications when offshore. Blue, yellow, and red, and then you can see the green one up here kind of. Those are the route using four different weather models. So each color is a different weather model. Um, it has us going into the stream, Gulf Stream here, which is running at three knots okay. in a, what is it, flowing northeast. <clears throat> but my concern is, if you look at the where that we'd be at that point of the wind, we'd be in a north wind, so they'd be, they'd be fighting each other. Okay. So the, model, the model's optimizing the math, but for comfort, I mean, if we get caught, if we were timing and we're on this Gulf Stream with this wind opposed to it, we're gonna get smoked. Like this low was not here yesterday. That red, super bright red thing. Just been in counterclockwise. Where is that in relation to the U.S.? Uh, that's New York, that about off the coast of okay. Delaware. And how many days would that be out? That's Friday, so uh, four or five. So we could potentially pull into North Carolina. With the weather conversations, it's like we have so much information, but then at a certain point. It's almost not too much information, but it's it's information you can't rely on because it's a prediction, at least for three days. We're comfortable having the conversation and making decisions based on that. But after three days, we're not. So then we have these conversations that spin off that are like, well, you know, if day four does happen, blah, 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 but might not. So maybe, yeah, maybe we'll just go anyway. You know, if that low does form, we may have to plan to head in towards Hatteras um, and potentially not do the rum line straight to Canada, just go into the east coast. So um, this morning I prepared these little pre-measured baking packs. I have pancakes and bread and basically these are just all the ingredients pre-measured out. This is the first time I've actually done this, but every time I'm offshore, I kind of wish that I had this done. This is the settee, and above the settee is a sliding door. This is where all my baking stuff is, so flour, baking powder, things like that. So when we're offshore and the boat is healing this way, uh, if you open this slider, then all those things fall out. Fall out on the floor, and then they tumble and it's kind of a big mess. When we are on a really big passage like this one, where it's gonna be about two weeks, then I will run out of bread and things like that and have to bake, so, um, or have to bake if we want those kinds of foods. So it's just really, I think it's gonna be really helpful to have this, because um, it's hard enough to do things offshore, so having to open lockers when everything's moving around is just, it's not, it's not good.
final thoughts on the prep? Um, I don't know. I know, I just went downstairs to check our list and I literally crossed off the last thing. You have no idea what the ocean will throw at you and especially with this passage, we really, we don't even know where we're gonna, where we're gonna end up. And that's a wrap. Come along with us next time on our passage to Canada. It starts off like any other sail, but when we departed, we had no idea what the future would hold, and that this passage would be the first time we weren't going to make our destination, and not because of weather.